So, how do we determine the direction of an impulse? Let's consider. Impulse has two common definitions. It's force times time, but it's also the change in momentum. With direction determined by our vector values, let's put lines over top to denote vectors and consider again. In definition one, the vector is the force. Time is not a vector. So the impulse is definitely in the direction of the force. And we could break it down even further, knowing that force is ma, Newton's second law, and we can see that the acceleration is the vector in this form. So we also know that the impulse would always be in the direction of the acceleration. Now, these are excellent hints for checking our results in impulse-related problems. Consider the involved vectors, force or acceleration, and determine the direction of the impulse. Now, let's switch over to definition number two. The vectors here are clearly the momentums. Knowing that delta P can be written as PF minus P naught, we know that the impulse is in the direction of this difference in momentum. So, to be able to determine the direction of the impulse this way, we need to be clear on how to subtract vectors. Now, we'll also run into situations where the easiest way to determine the impulse, both magnitude and direction, is through vector subtraction. So, bottom line, we need to make sure we're solid with vector subtraction. So, let's consider these two vectors vector A and vector B. Remember that vector addition starts with drawing the vectors in tip to tail configuration. So, vector A plus vector B. And our result goes from the starting point to the very end point. And let's call our result or resultant R. And this should look familiar. So let's switch things up quickly then. What about vector A minus vector B? Now, there are a few ways to visualize this, but most find it easiest to adjust the subtraction to be a vector addition. So we can just do our tip to tail configuration again. So how do we write A minus B as an addition? Well, how about A plus negative B? Because plus minus is a minus. So it's legit. Really, it's just a subtle change, but it is helpful for visualizing. Consider, the negative B is just the vector B, but pointed in the opposite direction, like this. Now we can treat this as a vector addition. A plus negative b. So tip to tail just like our other vector addition and the result again going from the very starting point to the very end point we'll call it r again where in this case r is a minus b. So there we go quick review. Now let's jump into a momentum problem. A 50 gram golf ball strikes a smooth floor as shown. What's the magnitude of the impulse applied to the golf ball by the floor? So our knowns. Well, we know that M is 50 grams or 0 0.05 kilograms. And we have our velocities. The magnitude is 45 meters per second. Direction shown 30 degrees from the normal. And we're looking for impulse. So we think about our two definitions. It could be the force times the time. Or it could be the change in momentum. Now, we don't have any mention of force or time here, but we do have information about momentum, our m and our v, so let's go with our second definition, the change in momentum, which we can expand to pf minus p naught. So definitely a 2D vector situation, we have angles in here, so a vector subtraction. And as shown, we can adjust this to pf plus negative p naught. So let's go to our diagram and let's label some things. P naught, the original momentum before the bounce in the direction of the velocity. And the PF, the final momentum after the bounce. Again, in the direction of the rebounding velocity. And now we'll sketch a negative P naught. Now it's going to be parallel to the P naught itself. And we simply move the arrowhead to the other side or point the P naught in the opposite direction. And still 30 degrees just aimed oppositely. 
and we have our two vectors. And so we can sketch our vector addition. Tip to tail, PF plus negative P naught. And the resultant, going right from the very beginning to the end, is our impulse. It's the change in momentum, or we know that that's the same as the impulse. So we can mark it as an I. Now we can multiply each velocity by the mass to get the magnitudes for our momentum, 2.25 kilogram meter per second. And let's put in our angles, 30 degrees here and here. So a bit of geometry, 180 minus 30 minus 30, 120 degrees in here. And we're ready to solve. And cosine law would be perfect. And so we plug in some values and we solve for our impulse I. And we have a change in momentum or impulse of 3.2 kilogram meters per second. And its direction, being a vector, well, it's straight up. So we can mark that. Now let's discuss this result. Does it make sense? Well, we know that impulse is also the force times the time. So the impulse should be in the direction of the force. And we look at our situation. We see that there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. That is, the horizontal velocity doesn't change at all. But definitely an acceleration straight up. So a force going straight up, yeah, that makes total sense. Also, you may have wondered, rather than the vector addition like this, we could have broken it up into components, p naught x, p naught y, and then pfx and pfy, and subtract them that way as components. And yeah, that would work perfectly well too. Just like working with velocities and forces, you can choose the vector addition or subtraction method that best suits the question and or your preferences. Either one will work just fine. In this tutorial, we looked at the definitions of momentum. With momentum being a vector quantity, our definitions can be used to determine both the magnitude and the direction. In our first definition, the force or the acceleration, other vectors, can be used to determine the direction of that impulse. And then we can look at our second definition and we notice that the change in momentum a vector subtraction can also be used to determine our direction and sometimes magnitude. Given this dependence on our knowledge about vector subtractions, we did a quick review on vector subtraction. And then we did a 2D momentum example to help solidify our understanding.